Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bike. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Double head. Solo kingfish trip right there. That mutton snapper right there, baby. Okay, folks, in this episode, we're going to do a catch, clean, and cook of one of my most prized, favorite predators to catch over the reef's deep edge. That's right, we're gonna show you how to get it done with a kingfish. Before we get into this though, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Okay folks, so like I said, we're going over the kingfish. Headed out the other day with my oldest of four children, my son, Abby, also known as the fish slayer. Took him out in the afternoon, Said we're gonna go planter trolling, do some meat fishing over the deep ledge of the reef. Had a great day, caught a couple of solid kingfish. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take you out on the boat with us, get rigged up, and put you in the driver's seat to show you how we got it done that day catching one of these nice predators. So let's get into this. All right, folks, so we've headed off Boca Raton Inlet today for about a half mile, three quarters mile out straight out of the inlet, just barely to the north. We're in about 132 feet of water. We're gonna head east, drop the planer in the water, head out to about 200, 250, smooth S-shaped curves in and out of the deep ledge of the reef. See if we can find someone to get into the bite with. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pitch our lure in the water. And we're gonna wind off our handline, hundred foot leader. rolling pen international 30 with the 80 pound braid parabolic bend in the planer trolling rod we know our planer is set we're in about 177 feet after getting set up and getting the planer out and set and rolling so like i said we're going to make smooth s-shaped curves see if we can find us someone we've got about a couple of hours till the sun goes down all right it looks like we just got hit All right, we got Abby on a fish. So, we're gonna keep the boat and slow forward. Not too tight, reeling in braid can be difficult. You having fun, big guy? I am. All right, get yourself situated, pull back. Remember, you gotta pull back, reel on the way down. Stand straight up. It's okay, you can stand up, there you go. Once he gets to his planer, we'll see what happens. Oh, he's putting up a little bit of a fight against him right now. There you go, up, oh, keep your balance, big guy. Don't rush it, don't rush it, there you go. As you can see, land is there, we are heading out to sea. We don't want a shark to come and get our fish. So great thing about planter trolling is it's usually called meat fishing. You're out to get whatever's biting. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. All right, so we are at the planer. All right, here you go, that's it, stop, all right. So I'm gonna have Abby go on ahead and go sit down, big guy. We're gonna see, wind up on the planer just a little bit. Here's what you wanna do. Whenever you get a fish on a planer, you are hand winding it in. You always want to let your leader loop out back of the boat. You don't want to lay it all down on your deck and make a big bird's nest jumbled up mess of it. 
Nat tape, that's what you do. You might not be able to reuse it because you'll have a big giant tangle. So we're gonna take our time. We're gonna hand line this fish in, see what we got. If we need the gap, we need the gap. Taking our time. Like I said, this is one of my favorite parts of planter trolling like this is the hand lining aspect of it. It's literally man versus fish time. This is planter trolling at its finest. This is what it's supposed to do. All right, I see the fish coming up. I'm gonna uh, see what we got. Looks, looks like we got a kingfish. See what happens when he gets up to the boat, how he's gonna react. Uh, oh. Look at that, he's getting closer. Oh, and there he goes, he wants, he wants to take off, which is fine. i tell you what, I'm gonna stick him with the gap. Just because I don't want to. Who caught the kingfish? Me. Yeah, you did. All right, so that's catching a kingfish for you. Nice, solid king, too. Glad I was able to capture that uh, on film and be able to share the experience with everyone. Now, we're going to get into cleaning the kingfish. My favorite way to clean a kingfish is to fillet. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to outline the fillet on the fish. Before we go any further, there's a little fact that I want to share with everybody. Kingfish can be skinned the same way you skin a dolphin or a mahi, just by yanking the skin back. It comes off fairly easy. I like to do this because uh, kingfish skin is really thin and if you go to fillet it and skin it the way you would typically with skinning a fish between the fat layer and the flesh. Sometimes you'll go through and you'll end up having to re-slice through and get the, uh, the skin off. So I tend to peel it back with my hand. Little tip, if you're ever looking to skin a kingfish, all right, so once we've pulled the skin back, we're going to continue filleting the fish, cutting down the top side all the way to the spine, the vertebrae, and then we can go on the underside. So now that we've filleted the first side of the fish, it's time to flip them over and do the second half. Same process, we're gonna outline our fillet, we're gonna remove the skin, and then we're gonna remove the flesh from the carcass. So now that we have both of our fillets on the table, it's time to debone them. So kingfish have lateral line pin bones running down the center of the fillet. So you just take your knife and you'll carve up either which side of them. And you're going to have to go about halfway down the fillet to get rid of all of them. Kingfish lateral line pin bones run about halfway down their body. Some fish have none. Some fish have 
them all the way down like cowfish. Kingfish runs about halfway down, so just make sure you get them out. It can kind of stifle your eating experience when you chop down on a sharp bone. Nobody wants that, right? Right. And then we don't have to worry about removing any rib cage bones because during the skinning process, the skin holds on to the rib cage bones, which is another cool tip about skinning a kingfish and peeling that skin back. It takes the rib cage bones right with it, so you don't have to worry about carving around them or shaving them off and losing some meat that way. And after we've deboned it, it's time to portion it out appropriately. Don't make your slices too big. If it's a thick piece, make them nice. Make it so that everyone can get a little bit of food. Okay, so that was how you clean and process the kingfish. Now comes my favorite part of catching any fish, which is the preparing and eating it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over my secret fish dip recipe. Folks are always talking about how kingfish make great fish dip. Well, I'm gonna share with you my recipe. I like to call this one tangy, sweet, and spicy fish dip. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by saying I'm going to smoke the kingfish. So to prepare this, what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna take some wood chips. For this one, we're gonna use hickory wood chips. We're gonna dump them in a bowl and we're gonna soak them in water for about 30 to 45 minutes. You don't need several pounds of it, you need a couple of good handfuls. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to prepare our fish. With all fish, before I cook them, I let them rest in a brine. This simple brine consists of salt, juice of one fresh lemon, ice, and water. We're gonna mix that all around, then we're gonna take our fresh caught kingfish, and then we're gonna dump it in that water. We're gonna let this rest for at least a half an hour. All right, so while our fish is resting in the brine and our wood chips are soaking, we're gonna prepare our grill. So I don't have a traditional smoker, but I can still smoke fish. I'm gonna go over with you how to do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our grill to do what's called indirect heat cooking. We're gonna set an aluminum pan off to one side and we're gonna set our charcoal off to the other. Make a little mountain of charcoal. Not too much. You don't want your grill to be too hot when you're smoking. Before we light it, we'll remove the aluminum pan, cover it with some charcoal lighter fluid, and light up the charcoal. Before you put your food on that grill, you gotta make sure that the charcoal does what's called ashing over, which means it'll be all gray. That means you're ready to cook. Don't immediately throw your fish on here. The grill will be too hot when it first lights up and gets going. You wanna let it sort of smolder for a little bit. Right when we're about ready to start cooking the fish, we're gonna take a couple of small handfuls of the soaked hickory chips and we're gonna drop them right on top of the charcoal. This is what is going to create the smoke and the steam that will cook the fish and embed that smoky flavor into our meat. All right, now we're ready to put the fish on the grill. We'll layer it in two layers, a little bit on the top deck, a little bit on the lower deck. Now. The key ingredient to this recipe as we are letting it rest and smoke is to drench it a couple of times in maple syrup. Yes, you heard me right, syrup. What it's gonna do as it's heating up is it's going to crystallize and give it slightly sweet flavor. All right, so we're gonna let our fish smoke for about 45 minutes to an hour. That should be more than enough time to get the fish cooked thoroughly all the way through. And while we're letting our fish rest in the smoker, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up some chopped vegetables, which will be part of the dish. What it is, is it's one whole sweet Vidalia onion and about six to eight jalapenos. You're gonna mince these up in as small pieces as you can. And after waiting for a little bit longer, our fish will be ready. We can remove it from the grill, and then we're gonna take it in, and we're gonna dump it in a bowl. So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna to wanna to break down our kingfish. You're gonna mash up your kingfish real good into as fine pieces as you can get. Then we're gonna take our minced vegetables, and we're gonna throw those on top, and then we're gonna use the key ingredient to finalize this recipe, which is one whole bottle of yum yum sauce. That's right, no mayonnaise, no mustard, yum yum sauce. 
And for the final phase, we're gonna mix this all together as well as we can till we get a nice, thick, good, rich, consistent fish dip. Now it's time to serve this bad boy up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a nice heaping cup full of it. We're gonna drop it on our plate. We're gonna take some pita chips, get us a fork, and look at that. That is some delicious looking food if I've ever seen some. This is my favorite way to make fish dip. Tangy, sweet, and spicy. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed. Now I hope you learned a little bit about how to catch, clean, and cook kingfish and make you some awesome tasting fish dip. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.